a little better than that. Here at Pilgrim Church, if this is your first time, I am Reverend Michael and I'm the pastor here at Pilgrim Church. And we are just so glad to be here together. This morning we are celebrating Pride. Also, Happy Father's Day to everybody out there who is a father. Um, we are celebrating Pride Month. It's been Pride Month all month, but this Sunday we're doing it a special. Thank you. 
Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm very proud to, to read this today. Um, this is uh, Pilgrim Church's open and affirming statement. It was adopted um, at the congregational meeting on May 23rd, 2004, and amended on January 31st, 2021. It's Article 5 on membership, Section 1, open and affirming. We believe every person is a child of God invested with dignity and worth. We believe excluding anyone from God's grace is incompatible with the teachings of Jesus. We choose to be counted with all people of faith who stand for equality, justice, compassion, and wholeness of life for every individual. In response to God's love made known to us in Jesus, we declare Pilgrim Church to be an open and affirming congregation. We welcome into our full life and ministry persons of every age, ability, marital or family status, race, color, ethnicity, culture, educational background, economic status, gender identity, sexual orientation, and faith journey.
How about now? Mm-hmm. We're going to do it like this. This is called things they didn't teach you in seminary. <laughs> Can we hear? Mm-hmm. More or less? Yes. How about you out there in the congregation? We, so, so all who might want to know why we're doing all of this, if you can hear us here, is so that people on Zoom and Facebook Live can also hear us. So we come to the time in our service when we pray to God for transformation and new life. So I invite you to close your eyes and lift prayers with me as I speak these words. Righteous God, we are your hands, legs, heart, and spirit here on earth. But our concern for a just and egalitarian world, O oh God, often dissipates at the point of our discomfort. Forgive us, O oh God, for our frailty and grant us transformation and new energy for the work of your kingdom. Revive us again, O oh God. And now as I speak these words, repeat after me or read the words of response in the bulletin. O oh Lord, revive. O oh Lord, revive. O oh Lord, revive. O oh Lord, revive. Amen and amen. The words of grace this morning reassure us that the good news is that God does not allow us to linger in places of comfort and familiarity. And instead, God, through the Holy Spirit, propels us out and out and out from ourselves to tough, unfamiliar places. Lucas, where the Spirit empowers us to heal, deliver, and resurrect. Now, please speak the words in your bulletin under the words of grace. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Shower us with your grace and mercy. Amen and an amen. Amen.
Thank you, choir. Let us all also pray for, for Michael, who I think is feeling a little under the weather this morning, our choir director. And we commend the choir for singing so well, even in Michael's absence. At this time, we ask for, I ask and I invite all the children and youth who would like to come forward, that you come forward at this time, and particularly on this Father's Day, there's a certain two-year-old that I would love if you would come forward. Manu, aha, thank you, Masha. aha, siéntate, so good to see everyone, $330, $330, everybody, may everybody be so generous, who remembers, oh, hello everybody, hello everybody, who remembers what we do before we do anything else, Emily, could you pull this down just a little bit, the speaker, the, the microphone, Excellent, excellent. We do, th what do we do? The thumbs, but not have to be up necessarily, right? They can be up, they can be down, they can be in the middle, however you're doing. That's right, so you ready? We're gonna do our thumbs. One, two, three. All right, I love it. I love that we have thumbs of all different directions and some other fingers that I didn't even ask for, which is terrific. <laughs> Remember, if anybody laughs, they're not laughing at you. They're laughing what? With you, because it's pretty funny. So I'm glad to see whether you're doing great, whether you're doing terrible, whether you're doing somewhere in the middle, you're here and God loves you. And that's what's important. So remember, I always start with a question. And the question this morning is, who knows what Pride Month is? Who knows? Does anybody know what Pride Month is? Emily? And you also know it. So Emily said it's to support the LGBTQ plus community. Does that sound about right to you guys? Yeah. Yes. What were you going to say, Luki? Uh, the, the same thing. Was anybody else going to answer the question too? Why do we celebrate Pride Month? Same thing. Same thing. So the question I have for you, why do we celebrate Pride Month in church? I know y'all. Why do we celebrate Pride Month in church? Anybody have an idea? Why do you think we celebrate Pride Month in to church? To support God's love. To support God's love. That's a very, very good answer. Anyone else know why we would celebrate Pride Month in church? And not just maybe in school or outside somewhere else. We celebrate Pride Month in church because we want to say God loves you. God loves everybody, right? And God is proud of you. God is proud of everyone. No matter who you love, no matter how you choose to live your life, God loves you and God is proud of you. And especially in this month, all the members of the LGBTQ plus community we want to say to them, here in this church, they are welcome. Here in the church, we are proud of them because they are children of God, and we love them, and we try to show them the same love that God has shown them. Even if there might be some people out there who don't think that's true, we know it's true here in this church, and that's why we celebrate pride here in the church. And I also just want to remind you, God is proud of every one of you all the time, okay? So can we pray together? Can we pray together? Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for creating me. Thank you for being proud of me. Help me to remember that you are proud of me all the time. Amen.
Very, very, very good. Very, very good job. You all are very smart, very intelligent, wonderful members of this story, this Children's and Message Time. Now we have Sunday School. I think you're going to go with Miss Jessica and Miss Betsy. Unfortunately, the Miss Mara didn't make it, wasn't able to make it in this morning. So the nursery is open for anyone who would wish to bring their children back. There will not be a nursery attendant there this morning. We just found that out a little bit ago. So, Manu, Basiko, Mama, okay? Let's give our kids a round of applause. I would pay you. I also want to thank Chris Pletcher for standing in for Miss Betty this morning. And I'm so <laughs> There we go. Today's scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 35 through chapter 10, verse 8. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon, the Canaanian and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not take a road leading to Gentiles, and do not enter a Samaritan town, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near, Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those with a skin disease, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks. Before I begin, I want to say how nice it is to have someone who clearly took a preaching class read the scripture because guy did, guy this guy knows how to read scripture thank you jay jay is uh, jay has been coming to church for some time now and later on we're going to receive him as a member of the church and i just want to elevate there are so many different ways we can contribute and give our gifts in the service of god and jay and certain others are really blessed with the gift of their voice and we thank them for contributing it to our worship experience this morning would you pray with me? Oh God, at this time, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The title of my sermon this morning is A Harvest of Love. A Harvest of Love. This Sunday, as I have mentioned already, here at Pilgrim Church, we are celebrating Pride. Now, obviously, Pride Month goes from the beginning of June until the end, and we really should be celebrating Pride all year round, but we've chosen this Sunday specifically to lift that up and make it a celebration. And so we honor and we celebrate all of the various LGBTQ plus communities that are out there. We, are, we realize there's not just one. 
and we affirm that every single person belonging to those communities, just like every single other person, is created in the image of the divine. And we also recognize that even though we have come a long way, we have come a long way towards recognizing and embracing as a society the full humanity and citizenship of our LGBTQ plus siblings, as we recognize that we are all citizens of the kingdom of God. As a society, we still have some ways to go or a long way to go in ways. As Jesus says in our gospel today, the harvest is still plentiful, but the laborers are as yet few. This phrase, that the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Who's heard that before? Raise your hand. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. It's a fairly popular scripture, an evocative one. And it comes from the height of Jesus' ministry. According to our scripture today, as Jesus is going through the land, teaching and proclaiming the good news and healing, he sees great crowds have come out to follow him. And he has compassion for them. Compassion for them. Because they, quote, were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Now, I want to note that this sense of being harassed or being helpless is not because of some inherent weakness in the crowds, as some might say. It's a quote from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, as one commentator notes, and it's specifically because of exploitation from the leadership of the land. What Jesus is saying is they are being harassed and exploited by the leaders of the land. So when he says the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers few, plentiful, but the laborers few, he is basically saying there's a lot of work to be done. The suffering and oppression of so many of God's people is vast. But the number of individuals willing to go out and bring them my love, he is saying, are too few. The sad truth, friends, is that Unfortunately, many of our precious siblings in the LGBTQ plus community are in a way like the crowds in our scripture today. Not helpless, I would say. Certainly not helpless, but harassed. You could say that is the case. This year alone, 490 anti-LGBTQ plus bills have been introduced in states across our country. 490 this year alone. We're not even past the halfway mark. Many have already been signed into law. This year alone, the rate of attempting suicide among LGBTQ plus teens is more than twice the rate of suicide attempts among all U.S. teens. In other words, teens who are members of the LGBTQ plus community are attempting suicide at twice the rate of their peers. This should be unacceptable. And just this past year, some hateful individual came right up to the front of this church and cut our pride flag clean in two. You wouldn't know it if you didn't know it because Stephanie did such a good job of stitching it back together, taping it back together, but it did happen. No worries, Jackie. <laughs> in a context such as this, celebrating pride becomes even more important. In a context such as this, as this celebrating pride becomes even more important and becomes more than just a celebration. Maybe that should have been the title of my sermon, more than just a celebration. Celebrating pride is declaring that God is proud of those who many say should live in shame. It is, in other words, to labor in the harvest of God. Pride is, along with a declaration of God's love, an act of defiance. An act of defiance that goes deeper than any protest, any march, or even the riots that gave it life. We all should know that the celebration of pride came as a one-year celebration of the Stonewall riots. In many ways, the act of defiance at the heart of pride is just to be yourself. To be you, wholly and unapologetically, when many seek to deny you. That's why many in LGBTQ plus movements say our existence 
is resistance. Our existence is resistance. I am an ally. I'm not a member of the LGBTQ plus community. And so in that respect, I can't really say that. My existence is perfectly accepted by the vast majority in society today. But others for whom there are others for whom their very existence is an act of resistance. A non-binary friend of mine, non-binary meaning they don't identify necessarily as a man or as a woman. Non-binary friend of mine lives in southwest, southeast Pennsylvania with their recently wedded wife. And a few days ago, somebody wrote a homophobic slur across the hood of their car under the cover at night. I'm not going to say the word here because I don't want to desecrate God's temple. I don't know what's gotten into this congregation today. It's okay. It's okay. So they, somebody wrote a horrible slur across the hood of the car, a homophobic slur. And the apartment manager apparently has done nothing. And they're still working with the police to find a resolution of some kind. These folks are not, as far as I know, huge activists, political or social ad activists or advocate on behalf of the LGBTQ plus community. They are just another hardworking, loving, wonderful, beautiful family trying to make their way and exist in the heart of middle America. That is why celebrating pride is also an act of defiance. Because every time one of you, and I'm going to speak at this point directly to any members of this congregation gathered here today or listening online who are members of the LGBT plus community, permit me to speak to you, even though I'm not one of you necessarily. Every time one of you takes pride in the way God created you, every time you walk in your truth, every time you affirm to yourself that God loves you and is proud of you, you are taking back your life from the hands of those who would deny it. And even more importantly, every time you do that for yourself, you also do that for somebody else. Because every time another member of the LGBTQ plus community, maybe someone who isn't feeling so proud of themselves in that moment, maybe one of them who is feeling scared, doubtful, uncertain of their place in the eyes of God, every time you affirm that for yourself, they look at you and might just save someone else's life. You are affirming God's love not only for yourself, but for them as well. And so this Pride Sunday, we have the flag, we have the cake, we have music. Let us celebrate. And I want us all to celebrate Pride with joy, with laughter, with glitter. If we have any, I should have brought some glitter today. But let us also heed the call to be laborers in the harvest of God. We have so many reasons to celebrate in this month of God, not least of which just the very act of God creating all of us the way we are. All the wonderful gains and advances we have made in our society on behalf or for the rights and full inclusion and liberation of all the members of society, including our LGBTQ plus siblings. And yet, there's still so much more work to be done. I'll just say briefly, there are some theologians and preachers who will say that history is always trending towards a more just and better place. I don't know if I believe that myself. I don't know if I believe that myself. But what I do know is we always have a responsibility to move society closer to the kingdom of God. To measure where we are now as a distance from that place, not against anywhere else in time. So if we see places and ways that our society could be more just and equitable now, we can't just say God's going to do it for us because that's just the way the history goes. We have a responsibility to do it 
channeling the power and the grace of God. So on this pride celebration, may we become those laborers that Jesus asks his disciples to pray for. Let us go out into those fields of suffering and strive to bring in, in Jesus' name, a harvest of love. Can the whole church say amen? Amen. And so I invite at this time to come forward all those who wish to affirm their past, their membership, affirm their baptism, I apologize, affirm their membership, affirm their baptism by uniting with us in this household of faith. I know that Jay, come forward. Come, come forward. Jay is one who would like to become a member today by affirming his baptism. Is there anybody else at this time who would like to become a member and affirm their baptism? And join with us in this household of faith. Friends, Jay, you've gotten to know Jay, I think, over the last few months. Jay comes to us as an ordained member of the clergy of the United Church of Christ as a chaplain. And and lives up and you serve in a hospital in Baltimore, right? I do. I'm at Mercy Medical Center. Jay, Jay came to us not too long ago after seeing some of the news reports about the flag and heard about us and came and has been... Uh, um, enjoying his time in this community and so he's asked that we receive him and this is a good morning as good morning as any to do that so Jay has found nurture and support in the midst of the family of Christ through pray, prayer and study he has been led by the Holy Spirit to affirm his baptism and to claim in our presence his covenantal relationship with Christ and the members of this church he is here for service to Jesus Christ using the gifts which the Holy Spirit bestows Friends, Jay, you are no longer a stranger and a sojourner, but you are an equal citizen with the saints and members of the household of God built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Christ Jesus alone being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure is joined together and grows into holy temple in Christ, in whom you also are built into it for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Jay, do you desire to affirm your baptism into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? I do. Do you renounce the powers of evil and desire to receive the freedom of new life in Christ? I do. Do you profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? I do. Do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciple, to follow in the way of our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best you are able? I promise, with the help of God. Do you promise, according to the grace given you, to grow in the Christian faith and to be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ, celebrating Christ's presence by furthering Christ's mission in all the world? I promise, with the help of God. May all who are able and comfortable stand. And let us affirm our faith with the words you find in your bulletin. Do you believe in God? I believe in God. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit. You may be seated. By your baptism, Jay, you were made one with us in the body of Christ the church. Today we rejoice in your pilgrimage of faith, which has brought you to this time and place. We give thanks for every community of faith with, that has been your spiritual home, and we celebrate your presence in this household of faith. Do you promise to participate in the life and mission of this family of God's people? sharing regularly in the worship of God and enlisting in the work of this local church as it serves his community and the world? I promise with the help of God. And so let us, the members of Pilgrim Church, express our welcome and affirm our mutual ministry in Christ. Please read aloud the words you find under welcome and reception in your bulletin. We welcome you with joy in the common life of this church. 
We promise you our friendship and prayers as we share the hopes and labors of the Church of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we continue to grow together in God's knowledge and love, and love and the witnesses of our ways and Savior. And would any members of the Council who wish to come forward to help me in this greeting please come forward at this time? Stand over, stand over here, guys. That's fine, that's fine. <laughs> we're going to read you this greeting, and then we're going to greet you with a hand of Christian fellowship, which could be a, a shake or a hug, if you really, if, if everybody's consenting. So let us repeat these words. In the name of Jesus Christ, Christ and on and behalf, behalf of, of the Cal sorry, of Pilgrim Church, Church. we extend we to you, you the hand of Christian, Christian love. love. Welcoming Welcome you, you into the company of this local church. church. I'm a hugger, by the okay. way. Okay, I'm a hugger, so. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome, Chick. Let us pray. Eternal God, we praise you for calling us to faith and for gathering us into the church, the body of Christ. We thank you for your people gathered in this local church. And we rejoice that you have increased our community of faith. Together, may we live in the spirit, building one another up in love, sharing in the life and worship of the church, and serving the world for the sake of Jesus Christ. Let the whole church say amen. 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 And thank you for being liturgists on the day you're being received. <laughs> We're going to do the last piece. My wife will get this done here. This time, Stephanie didn't have to remind me. As Reverend Durst likes to say, in the manner of good, organized religion, we have to sign the registry of new Amelia. We come now to our time of offering. We have so much to be grateful for, so many reasons to give God thanks and praise. Let us take this moment to give back to our church, to our community, and to the world. You can give by placing your offering in the plate as it comes around, by sending a check directly to the church, or by your donation online via Zelle. As we have been so richly blessed, let us also seek to be a blessing to others. Your morning offering will now be received.
Thank you, God, for giving us these gifts to share our time, our talents, our labor, and our treasure. Consecrate them, O oh God, and us as well, so that we may become a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you. Amen. Amen. After each prayer request, I will say, God, in your mercy, and I invite everyone to respond, hear our prayer. Let's try that one time. God, in your mercy. What can I pray for for you? Well, what can we pray for together this morning? Joy. Um, I would ask for prayers for my um, sorority sister, Zanetta, who uh, lost her mother. Um, very sad. Uh, last Saturday, she buried her uncle. On Sunday, she buried her mother, um, all in the same cemetery in North Carolina. And a couple weeks before that, her niece was killed in a car accident. So um, prayers for Zanetta and her family. We pray for God's comfort in the midst of tribulation for Zanetta. God, in your mercy. Donna. to ask prayers for my cousin, Dave, who suffered a stroke about a week and a half ago, I think. Um, and then also prayers for the people in Texas who were hit by the tornado, um, just devastating. And although Arkansas did not um, get a tornado, they had a very severe storm last night and over 90,000 people have lost power. So prayers for, for our siblings in the other side of the country. Thank you. We pray for Dave and for all those who care and are concerned for him. We pray for the people in Texas and Arkansas in the wake of these storms and all those who are dealing with these, these uh, disasters. We pray for God's strength. God, in your mercy. Lee, if you could come, come forward. Thank you. Clifton Helton, who fell three times about two weeks ago and had to go into the hospital last weekend. He's now in a rehabilitation center just off Route 29 and uh, seems to be doing much better. Please pray for him that he makes a good recovery. Yeah, I believe he's 93 and it's a tough road for him. For Clint and Loretta, God in your mercy. Sure. Stephanie. Um, you know how uh, us, we pilgrims love our birthdays. Um, we are really blessed this week because we have pilgrim triplets. Uh, Donna, uh, Donna Sawyer, uh, Sandy Spiro, and Jay Whitcomb all celebrated their, well, let's say 18th birthdays. <laughs> on Thursday. So uh, wish them all a very happy birthday. And Michelle also today, right? Yes, I'm sorry. And Michelle's birthday is today. Michelle Schoen. Did we miss anybody? Four names, guys, four names. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Michelle, Donna, Sandy, and Jay. Happy birthday to you. Robin. Sorry, my mind went blank. Steve, Steve might have COVID. Um, Margaret Jones is doing the refreshments today because the person who's supposed to do it has COVID. I think it's Steve that was that has COVID. Steve, right there. Or not Steve. Who is supposed to do? Or somebody, somebody has COVID that's not supposed to be doing refreshments. Uh, Miles. Yeah, sorry, Steve. For Miles. Miles has COVID. My, 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 uh, sorry, sorry, Steve. <laughs> Steve. 
We pray for a speedy recovery for Miles. God, in your mercy. Yes, sir. If you could just wait. The reason for the microphone is that people on Zoom can hear you if, if we get you in the mic. Good morning. I want you to pray for my, my best friend, Reggie Grabless. He's, he's suffering with cancer. He has lesions on his, 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 his liver, 16 small lesions. I went to see him about a week ago. He's doing better. But I just want y'all to pray for him because I love and thank you for letting me be here. What was his name, Reggie? Reggie Gramlin. We pray for Reggie and cancer is such a devastating thing, not only for the person with it, but for those who love them. So we pray for God's healing and for strength for you and all who love Reggie. God, in your mercy. To you, O oh God, we commend all those for whom we have prayed, trusting in your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. And we take a moment in silence to lift up those prayers that are in our hearts but have remained unspoken until this point. Amen. And now let us pray the, G the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. A few announcements for the church community. Number one, I always want to take this opportunity to welcome any new visitors who wish to stand up and be recognized, to stand up and announce yourself or uh, introduce yourselves. And if you wish to remain in the relative anonymity that this uh, space will provide you, you may also do so as well. So would any first time visitors wish to stand up and introduce themselves? Why don't we go with... with Welcome, Alice, and welcome, Darvell. We'll give them all a round of applause at the end, or now. Darvell, gentlemen. Alice, Darvell, Dale, and Elias, we are so glad that you are with us today. A few announcements, as you can see in your bulletin. The office will be closed tomorrow, Monday, June 19th, for Ju in observance of Juneteenth. Notwithstanding, <laughs> the business of the church goes on, meaning that we have a council meeting tomorrow evening, Monday, June 19th at 7 p.m. We will make a practice of avoiding holidays in the future. This was just an uh, oversight on all of our parts. And then, uh, but please do, if you are uh, on council, um, please uh, come. And then you can see an announcement from Jackie about supporting homeless families through the Stepping Stone Shelter. Did you want to say anything about that today, Jackie? Fortunately, they're not filling up as quickly. Normally, our church is really good about doing these things. I'm a little nervous now because uh, Miles is supposed to be doing the dinner on Monday. And with the COVID, I'm not sure that that's something we can do. Um, <clears throat> we also have no one signed up for Wednesday, so I'll, I'll be here after church. There are four different parts. You don't have to do the whole dinner. You do the meat or the starch or the vegetable, or we have enough people bringing the water now. But uh, I'd appreciate if you can just give me a cl little clue that if we need you in emergency, maybe you can order pizza and make a salad or something. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie and the mission board, and let's get those slots filled. Thank you very much. The next newsletter will come out on Thursday, June 29th. Um, please send your articles in no later than the evening of Tuesday, June 27th. And lastly, as well, if anyone was going to come up and ask us, no, the baby hasn't come yet, or you pr might not see us here <laughs> today. So keep us in your prayers. Thank you very much. Do we have any other announcements from the floor at this time? Roberta. Form before the summer break. Um, we need people over the summer to sing, or if you play a musical instrument of some sort, instrumental music is fine. Or even if you have some favorite things that you think 
favorite music that you think is appropriate that is recorded music, even that would be great. We have a sign-up sheet in the choir room. So please, let's fill up the sign-up sheet. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Roberta. With that, let us rise in body and spirit as we are comfortable for our closing hymn. That good old standard in your, in your hymnals, if you want to look at the notes or in their bulletin is the words, what a friend we have in Jesus. this blessing. Take pride in who you are. No matter how the world makes you feel on any given day, remember this fact, that you are created in the image of God and you are wonderfully and fearfully made. And God takes pride in you. Remember that fact and may it bring you peace. Let us go in peace and let the whole church say, Amen. We are dedicating our uh, benediction, our choral response to Debbie Houston.